Hey, welcome to New Hope. I'm not going to shake your hand with all the virus stuff going on, but he has risen Easter 2020. I just want to invite you in, even though these are strange times. Come on in. These are odd times where we're not able to meet together, so we meet, in a sense, in the spirit. And we, we're mindful of each other, we pray for each other, we think of each other. Kind of hard when you want to do, when you want to meet each other's needs, but you're not supposed to get together with people. So we find this to be a very difficult time. I think probably the best part of it is that sometimes, I know when you love people, sometimes loving people means to not do something. Maybe it's kind of like that now, where by showing restraint, we're, it's a way that we're showing love for each other. But my hope is that as we uh, share Easter together, as we are mindful of each other and as we pray for each other, that God really will give us great joy uh, within our soul and also give us a great sense of anticipation when finally we can be getting back together again. Maybe when we get back together down the road, maybe in May, we'll appreciate it in a whole new way. And we'll just we'll think, man, I, we're just never going to take this for granted again. Uh, just how, how great it is to, to experience the physical presence of our brothers and sisters in Christ. But for today, it's just going to be me, maybe some geese and some ducks behind me out in the wind, and I'll be talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And may we all be worshiping him, giving thanks to him, and just set aside time on Easter Day, even though it, it'll be just with our families, we won't be with our whole church family. May it be a great time of joy and blessing as we do that. And I trust that uh, God will be honored by our, as we worship him in our, in our, with, our, with our heart, with our soul, and as we give our best to him, in, in spite of our not being able to gather together. So. I pray, I pray that you have a wonderful Easter and look forward to seeing you again at some point. Uh, one, that we cling to the gospel, that the gospel is really important and that we keep the gospel front and center. That's the most, part, most important part. And, and then out of that comes faith, and out of that comes love and good works, you know, the things that you talked about today. Wow. So that's, uh, that's all by the grace of God, it truly is, because I know myself, and, and, uh, but he promised that, that if you believed in him, that he would make you into a new creature in Christ. And, and, I, and I think he's done that in my mm -hmm. life, you know, and I haven't arrived by a long shot, mm -hmm. but, uh, but we're taking a step in the right direction. You know? I think the neat thing is that the Spirit has shown me so many truths when I study the Word, etc. And uh, I'm, a kind of, I'm a student at heart, and so I, I love that aha mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. And he's given me a lot of aha moments. That's really cool to see. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a good life mm -hmm. to be on. It really is, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, the the sense of peace and contentment that I've experienced through the ups and the downs and everything else is just beyond um, description. Really, it's beyond belief almost. It's a it's a good life to live. You know, the one thing that I did not want to happen is to get at the end of my life and be disappointed. And I can honestly say that my walk with Christ is leading me to a point that, yeah, I'll be, I'll be satisfied when I get to the end of my life because I know it's not me running my life, it's Him running my life. And so whether I dig ditches or my PhD at Purdue or whatever I am, you know, it's where he's called me to be. Mm. And so, you know, I can look back and say my life is good. <laughs> okay, great. I don't know, how was that? Thank you very much, excellent. That's what we're looking for.
Almost 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was crucified, it seemed like all was lost. The disciples had their plans, they had their dreams, the future they envisioned, all the messianic hopes, they were gone, nailed to the tree, buried. But no, surprise. Actually, at the cross, the battle was won. And now with the resurrection, a new day was dawning. And the resurrection truly changed everything. When Jesus got up and left the grave, it was truly a new day. What a surprise that was for the disciples. What was the biggest surprise in your life? You know, I imagine all of us have had a lot of big surprises. I think probably being born was, was the first big surprise. If I, if I remember correctly, I think I just screamed and said, no, no, I didn't want to leave where I was. What a surprise that was. But Jesus raising from the dead is an even bigger surprise, and it's a good surprise. I'd like to read Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10, the biblical account of the resurrection. 
After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know which, that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, and then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. And so the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. And they ran to tell his disciples, and suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And so Jesus rose from the dead, and the tomb was empty, and he was gone. It's interesting, in verse 8, the Bible tells us that the women who had gone to the tomb, that they were afraid, it says, yet filled with joy. It's interesting, both afraid yet filled with joy. I believe their fear came from the right, truth that it was outside of their expectation or experience. There's a little box that we all make, that we, what we expect, what we experience, what reason tells us is possible. This was totally outside of their normal realm of experience. And so they were afraid. And at the same time, they had this deep joy. Can this really be? Dare we hope? Hope is a risky thing, isn't it? But yet so wonderful to have hope growing in our heart. Now the resurrection, historically and theologically, the basic truth is that it happened. It happened historically and theologically. We find out why it happened. I'd like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 through 8. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the Twelve. And after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally afraid. And so we see there that Jesus died, but that he died for our sins, and then he rose from the dead. And this objective truth is revealed to us by revelation, and then we receive it by faith. And the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians that it's for by grace are you saved through faith, not of ourselves, it's the gift of God. And this is the history or the truth that is revealed is that Jesus rose from the dead after he had paid the price for our salvation. He rose. Now beyond that raw fact of the resurrection, which doesn't depend upon our feelings at all, it's just what happened, we have the personal or what you might call the emotional or the experiential aspect of the resurrection. Re resurrection. It's, like, it's like, wow. It's like a surprise that we, we can have this new life now. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4, the Apostle Paul applies the resurrection to our life even now. He says, We are therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And notice that's present tense, that we can live a new life now. Again, I would ask, what was your biggest surprise in your life? And I talked to Lynn about that. I asked her what the biggest surprise she had ever experienced, and she thought for a while. Of course, we, we were reminded of the Challenger, the, the Challenger shuttle, and the explosion. We think of 9-11. In our own history, we think of cancer diagnoses, of death, you know, the phone ringing, and those kind of things that, that, that have happened. Those are the things that that seem to surprise us the most. Perhaps this says something about us. You know, we're so blessed that we're not surprised by the prosperity or the order that we experience in our life. And the things that surprise us are the, are the things that, 
that, that are horrible or that, that are terrible. But perhaps also this is the reality of life east of Eden and the fact that we're not in heaven yet. The reality of disappointment, of loss, and you know, of tragedy that still this just surprises us. It's just not the way it is supposed to be. But yet it's the way it is. So dare we hope. Dare we believe. And I think of all the, the big days historically where we're where people were just surprised and they were just so excited. I think of V-Day in World War II where you have people just dancing in the streets. They're just so excited and happy with what has happened. I think that's probably what it would be like if the Lions won the Super Bowl. You know, it would just be un unbelievable what a surprise that would be. And as I, I, I just imagine that kind of, kind of surprise and that, that great joy, I think of Psalm 126. Psalm 126 pictures the people of God in the exile and following the exile when they, they had lost everything and finally they're being restored to their lives. And Psalm 126 says this, When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. And then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. And then he states this hope. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. And he who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. And so Israel, they experienced this, this horrible exile, being just ripped out of their land, losing everything they had. But then the joy in the surprise when they were restored, it was party time for them. And they were just jumping up and down with joy. We celebrate Easter because there is no greater swing in our experience, no greater surprise than that of death being changed to life. There's no greater surprise to be surprised on the upside than to have death defeated and to have life restored. And I would suggest that this is the absolute biggest surprise that we will ever experience in our lives. Of course, the challenge is that we still live, we still live in a fallen world. We still live in what you might call a Good Friday world. And we walk on this kind of edge. We walk in this in-between space between Good Friday and Easter. The resurrection has begun. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. And it has begun, and he's given us the deposit of the Holy Spirit, so we have this, the Spirit in our heart, and we have this, 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 this knowledge and excitement that the resurrection has begun, but yet still, we find ourselves dying, yet living. And we have our feet in both worlds. The Apostle Paul talks about that in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. He says it this way, it says, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so we find ourselves with this choice. You know, the first thing is to embrace Jesus and what he did for us. He came to the earth, lived a righteous life in our place, and then he died on the cross for our sins, but then he rose again. And we are reconciled to God, and we have all these promises of God that are given us in the Bible, and we embrace this by faith. The Bible tells us that he who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And we trust in these promises of God and what Jesus did for us. But the second aspect of that choice that we have is then to live, to live our life on that basis, not living in fear, but in faith. And that makes all the difference. We have a great promise in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 28, where it says, God works all things together for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. And that's the great hope that we have, and that's what our faith is based upon. The resurrection, you might say, it works its way back into our present life and it gives us 
a different way to live. Resurrection life. And so even though we live in a Good Friday world, we are an Easter people and we live resurrection life. We have this new life that we can live in a fallen world. What's our biggest fear normally? Normally our biggest fear is death. But that fear is gone. And now we don't have to fear death anymore. So what is our, what is our biggest concern now is that we don't want to miss the life that God has for us. And I believe that we as, as humans and even as the people of God is we want to live the life that God meant for us to live. We don't, want to live with, we don't want to live with fear. We don't want to live a diminished life. But we want to find the will of God and to live by faith in that. And our biggest fear is to not have that. May God help us to live that new life that he promises us. That resurrection life. The Bible talks about that. You know the biggest surprise is still ahead. I mean we have these little surprises along the way where God does these, these surprising little glimpses where he helps us and he provides for us and he rescues us. Sometimes he heals us and he gives us these little glimpses. But the biggest surprise is still yet to come. And that's the day when we're finally fully restored, when we are resurrected with Christ. And that's still yet to happen. That's still in the future and we're still waiting for that day. The Apostle Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm just going to read verses 22 and 23. He says, For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn. Christ the firstfruits, and then when he comes, those who belong to him. And so we read about the resurrection of Christ. We long for our own resurrection with him, and we taste it now. But I believe nothing is going to prepare us for, for that day when it finally happens and what an absolute surprise that it's going to be. And it's going to be a surprise on the upside where we're just going to be absolutely thrilled. We're going to be like jumping up and down where it's going to be even a bigger surprise than our birth was. It's going to be a bigger surprise than all these, these, these horrible things in a fallen world that might have taken us by surprise. It's going to be bigger than any other surprise of our life to finally be raised with Christ and as we begin to receive all the promises that he's given us. And so we are a resurrection people. We're given new life. May God help us not to live by fear, not to waste our lives, but to live that new life that God has for us. And Christ came to this earth. He gave himself for us dying on the cross. He rose from the dead so that we could have this new life in him. My hope for my own life is that I live that way, that I have that kind of life. And you're never too old to be living that kind of life. Until we're done on this earth, we're not done. And my desire in my own life is to live that, that new life that God has promised me and that he's promised you as his children. And my hope for New Hope Fellowship as well is that we are a church where people can see that we really are living a resurrection life and all of our weakness and all of our frailty and all of our failings and all of our the fact that we're st we still haven't arrived we're still growing we're still learning that we would be the, the the kind of church that it is apparent to the world that hey these people really are living for God and really are living that new life that's my hope in my own life and that's my hope for new hope as well, that God will help us to live that resurrection life, that abundant life that Jesus talks about. And this Easter, may this be a time where we recommit to that. And maybe there's, maybe there's things we have to just let go of. And this, this whole uh, quarantine thing has maybe helped us to let go of some things that we should be letting go of. Maybe, it, it, maybe it's actually helping us to just release all these, th these lesser things that took up our time now we can latch on to some things that God has for us that are really meaningful and really purposeful in our life. And may this Easter be a time where we recommit to the abundant life that God has for us. Let me say a word of prayer that God will help us. Father, we thank you so much for the gift of life. We acknowledge that you've given us physical life. You, you knit us together in our mother's womb. And we thank you for spiritual life in Christ that you made a way for us to be absolutely forgiven in Christ and that you gave us the Holy Spirit that we might, may live a new life. And I pray, Father, that you would strengthen our faith, that you would strengthen our hope, and that you would strengthen our love. I pray you take away all fear 
that may be knocking on our, on our door and help us to live with that, that joy of our salvation in faith and in hope. We just thank you again for life. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. You were the word at the beginning When we've got the long most high You hid in glory in creation I'll revealed in you Jesus.